Hi, my name is Mark White and welcome to the latest video in this series of vlogs on going electric or, or gone electric as it is now. Um, this is a little bit of a bonus video. I wasn't really planning to do another video until this weekend when we do our first real long journey in the car. Um, but So this has come about through feedback from one of the viewers. I, and I, that's really the first thing I want to say is the feedback I'm getting from people has been fantastic. I'm really pleased with it. Uh, it really wasn't intended to be a series of videos for mass consumption, but um, it was really just to share my journey with sort of friends and people I know. Uh, but a lot of people have picked up on it and been watching it and been sort of giving me great feedback, asking lots of questions. Uh, I even did some tech support this weekend when uh, one, one of the listeners uh, got their uh, menu system on the car stuck in French and uh, needed some help on, on doing it and getting it back to English. Um, so that was quite amusing and uh, we're pleased to be able to help. Um, but I'm also starting to get a few requests for things that people want to know. Um, I'm also getting advice from people and suggestions, which I'll talk about a little bit later as well. But this particular video came off the back of a suggestion from somebody called Highland Old Git, and I'm really sorry, I don't know your, your real name. Um, but this particular request was basically to do a video on the app, uh, the My Peugeot app. And originally I said it probably wasn't worth the effort because it, there isn't really an, a great deal in the app at all um, and thought it probably wasn't worth a video in its own right. So I was going to do a few screenshots, drop them into the video I'm going to do this weekend. And then I found as I was taking the screenshots, I was thinking actually probably there is enough content. So a little bit of a Brucey bonus this one. This is just something that wasn't planning to do uh, but thought I would. Uh, and again, thanks to Highland Olgit for the suggestion. Now, the first thing I must say about the app, um, complete disclosure up front, I really don't like it. Um, of all the things about the car, the app for me is easily the worst part of it. Um, everything else about the car we love. The car itself is brilliant, but the app is not great. Um, I mean, the good news about an app, it can be fixed with software updates and things, whereas physically on a car, it's a different issue. So maybe the app will improve with time, um, but, you know, full disclosure, not a fan. Really, I'm not a fan. Uh, it wouldn't stop me from buying the car. If somebody said, would you buy, buy one of these cars? I would still say yes. Um, but the app is a, a you know, uh, it is an issue. And uh, we'll talk about that as we go through it. So um, with that in mind, uh, I've got a couple of other people to name check in this video as well. People who've either suggested stuff or asked for, for some information. So uh, keep your eyes peeled for those. But without further ado, we'll, we'll take a look at the app. Now, the one thing I will say, I was going to try and record this as a live video um, by using the app on my phone and record the screen grabs and stuff along the way, but realised there was actually some personal information appearing on some of the screens, uh, things like the VIN number of the car and stuff, and thought probably not best to put that in a public forum. So what I've decided to do is do some screenshots, stick them into a PowerPoint presentation, uh, I'll walk you through it that way, uh, but at least I've been able to sort of, you know, hide some sensitive information and stuff, so I hope you don't mind about that. Um, anyway, without further ado, let's have a look, see what it's all about. Okay, so this is a screen grab from the Peugeot website and uh, referring to my Peugeot app. And what you can see there, this app can get downloaded from either the App Store if you're on iOS or from Google Play. Uh, I presume you guys know how to download apps for your devices. And when you log in, this is the first screen that you'll see. Now, you don't see all of this initially. Um, what you have to do is connect to their connected services, and um, that then means that you can do things like the deferred charging and setting the climate timer. But you do need to set up the connected services first before you can do that. And that was where we hit our first snag in the fact that we could get the app to connect to the car, but we couldn't get the connected services to work and it turns out that you need to do multiple journeys of 20 minutes or more uh, before the connected services will work um, which seems a bit of a strange approach um, even having done that uh, which was a bit tricky in lockdown because you couldn't do any driving um, but having done that we still were struggling to get it to work spent a lot of time with Peugeot tech support who uh, couldn't really help they tried but we were still struggling uh, and eventually we ended up deleting the app, reinstalling it, having already done lots of 20 minute journeys and then suddenly miraculously it just started working. Um, so that was a little bit odd. 
And then as you scroll down the screen, you then get to a little map that shows you where the vehicle's position is compared to where you are. And this is the next thing that's a little bit interesting. Um, the blue dot is where I am, and the orange key symbol is where it thinks the car is. Um, the interesting thing is when I took this screenshot, I was sitting in the car at the time, and it seems to think the car is about three miles away from where I actually am. So that in itself was peculiar and really couldn't work out what's going on there. Um, very odd and not particularly great, to be fair. Um, <clears throat> if you click on the charging option, uh, it then takes you into the charging screen. And you've got a couple of things that you can do here. Um, obviously, you've got the ability to do an immediate charge or a deferred charge. But again, you can control this when you plug the device in. And when you plug your, your charger into the car, you've got a button that you press whether you want it to time or not. Um, but you can see down here, you've got the ability to edit the start time. Um, and this is interesting. Uh, and I just want to thank uh, Lynn Fisher for this one. So you probably remember from previous videos, we're on the Octopus Go tariff, which allows us cheap charging from half past midnight uh, for four hours. Now we found the four hours probably wasn't a big enough window for cheap charging. Um, you know, we would sort of, if you're less than half full, um, you need more than four hours. So then you were kicking into the more expensive charge rates. Still cheap compared to buying petrol. Um, but Lynn contacted me through the messaging on one of the videos and said, did you know about Go Faster? And Go Faster is another tariff that you can't find on uh, Octopus's website. So you have to call them up and ask them about it and they do five hours of cheap rate charging and they also allow you to adjust your start time for when the cheap charging starts. Now this is on a limited uh, supply basis because they don't want everybody charging at the same time so they give you an option of when you can do your charging. Um, we were able to choose 8.30 um, for five hours. Uh, the rate is a little bit more expensive than the four hour rate, but it's only half a pence. So for, instead of 5p for four hours, it's five and a half p for five hours. And that extra hour will mean that we'll be able to, you know, charge the car when it's even more empty and do it all on cheap rates. And of course, by starting charging at 830, it also means um, that we can, you know, wash use the washing machine, use a tumble dryer, use dishwasher, um, any TV and stuff we're watching, that's also going to be at cheap rate as well. So that's worth doing. Um, so if you like the sound of that tariff, I would suggest looking at switching to Octopus Go. Um, I'll have my referral code in the comments at the bottom. If you want to use that referral code, we share £100 each. So you get 50, I get 50. And at my calculations, I think 50 quid will buy you three and a half thousand miles of uh, range. Um, so worth doing, um, I say please use my referral code if, uh, if that appeals to you. Um, the alternative is of course finding the public charge point and that's the other thing that you can do. Now when you click that it takes you to BP Pulse who Peugeot have got a relationship with uh, and the ability to then install the BP Pulse app um, which looks a little bit like this. Uh, as you can see, that's coming in from the App Store. This is not in the My Peugeot app. Now, I haven't screen grabbed this. This is an app in its own right. Um, again, you can use the app and you can pay a certain rate for your uh, charging. Uh, but you can also become a subscribed member where you pay £7 something a month. And that gives you cheaper rates at their uh, charging stations. And when you sign up, you get three months for free. Um, now, we've not done this uh, yet because we've not been doing public charging, but this weekend onwards we will be. So we've just signed up for that and we'll see if we use BP Pulse and uh, how much that actually saves us. Um, also on that first screen was the option to precondition the car and preheat it. Um, so here you can see we've got a button where we can activate the aircon or we can set a timer. Uh, and the timer will sort of automatically kick in. So if you leave for work the same time every day, you can set that timer. The idea of this is that if the car is plugged in, it will heat the car up for you before you get into it. And that means that when you drive away, you're not using the electric heater to warm the cabin of the car um, and draining your battery because you've done it off your mains. 
Uh, I don't think this is quite as clever as things like the Tesla, which actually heats the battery as well to make the battery more, more efficient. It seems really just to heat the cabin. Um, it's also worth mentioning, just going back to the 830 thing, um, let's go back a couple of screens. Um, the one thing I'd like to see on this app, and a few people have also mentioned it, is to be able to set an end time for the scheduler as well. So you only charge up to when your cheap rate energy finishes. Um, unfortunately, they don't do that, which um, oh, that would be a great update to the app if Peugeot are listening. Um, I did get a message, though, from a guy called Edward Robert, and he also has a pod point charger, the same as us. And he did mention that PodPoint have some beta software which allows you to control your charge time from your charger rather than from your car. And on that, you can set a start and end time for your charge to work. Um, so that would get around that. Um, we've not sort of downloaded that and gone for that beta upgrade to try it. Um, you know, we're, we're managing without that at the moment. But it is worth mentioning, and thanks for Edward for, for mentioning that as well. Um, beyond there, what we've then got is um, a, a screen where you can look at the maintenance options and this takes you into your servicing. Um, you can see here it's uh, this service is one year or another 4,971 miles. I have to admit that does seem very low for a first service for a car. Um, I don't know whether that's just the first service and then you've got longer mileage service intervals from that point onwards. Um, so we'll wait and see about that. But this is the interesting thing, and that's how many miles uh, we've got on the car. So let me just show you this. This is um, a screenshot from the dashboard. Um, the app that I've just connected to the car says I've got 770 miles on it, and the mileometer on the car itself says I've done 1,341. This is correct. The app is incorrect, and I don't know why that's the case. Uh, and again, on the next screen, where you can see the mileage, it's showing there as well. So again, the app has not picked up the correct mileage from the car. And I'm sat in the car taking these screenshots at the time. Um, so heaven knows, I have no idea what's going on there. Uh, again, most peculiar. Um, I mentioned the connected services earlier. Um, and uh, there's a couple of things. That there's, we'll look at this tab in a second. But um, this is talking about vehicle data and exporting um, your data onto the app so you can analyze the data uh, when connected. And then there's this other option to do with telemaintenance, which we'll look at in a second. Um, so the connected services, this should allow you to download all your journeys onto your phone. Um, again, we've had not great success with that, unfortunately. Um, the telemaintenance thing was something that I've not seen before. I think this must be an update to the app. And here you can see it's uh, an update you can get, which is free. So I thought I'd, I'd look at this and take some screenshots of it. And then this happened when I tried to connect and download it. So um, I couldn't get this to work. Uh, so again, another little bit of a glitch uh, on the app. Uh, on the My Services tab here, you can see uh, the connected services. So this is the stuff that I mentioned earlier that we couldn't get activated initially um, until we'd done multiple journeys of 20 minutes or more. Um, uh, you can see they're now activated. So the e-remote control is for the charging and the preheating, and then the connected navigation pack is for updates to the sat-nav, um, and that also includes traffic, those sorts of things. And I have to admit, the sat is brilliant. Really pleased with the sat on the car. Um, in previous car, I would connect my phone and use Apple CarPlay, so I could use Google Maps. Um, but to be honest, I've found the, um, the sat -nav on the Peugeot to be really good, uh, probably because it's a TomTom sat -nav and you would expect that to be good quality. Um, talking about the vehicle data and uh, sort of downloading journey information, uh, again, I, I've rarely connected my phone to the car, in fairness. Um, we use my wife's phone uh, more often. Um, but having connected my phone today, this is the only journey that's showing. I've basically got one journey picking up on my phone. And that's because I think when you get in the car, it asks you if you want to connect. And then on, only then will it record uh, that journey to the car. So you have to build them up over time and the app won't show the history of your journeys, which, again, I think is a bit poor. Um, 
and especially when you're using two phones, because depending on who's driving the car depends on whose car the journey information goes to. Um, so again, pretty useless to be absolutely honest. So that's the My Peugeot app. I uh, hope you found that useful. I, I say all along I did promise an unbiased opinion on the positives and the negatives of going EV, and likewise that will continue with any thoughts on the car. Um, as you can see, um, I don't think the app's great. Um, I do think my, uh, Peugeot need to do some work on it uh, and improve it, and hopefully they will um, with updates in the future. Um, so Highland Old Git, thanks for the suggestion. I uh, hope you found that useful. hope that's what you were looking for. <coughs> then the other thing really is just talking about the next couple of videos. So as I said, we're, we're going to get um, a long weekend coming up and a bit of a break where we're going to do a long journey and put some extra miles on the car and also have to use public chargers properly for the first time. So uh, I'll be recording that video this weekend and get that out to you sometime next week. Um, we'll see how that goes, that will be fun and uh, we'll, we'll take that from there. Um, I do plan to do one more video after that and that could be the final one and that's going to be on EVs in general, public charging, uh, how you uh, get people to charge cars from home in an urban environment, stuff like that, in order to get to the 2030 target of stop selling EVs, there's some big issues that need sorting there. Um, we'll also pick on th things like grants and stuff for converting to EVs. Um, I got contacted by one of the viewers called Paul Pyro, um, who had the grant slashed by the government just before he was due to get delivery of his car. Uh, in fairness, um, Peugeot seemed to have done a good job there in helping him out and uh, it all worked out really well. So I'm definitely chuffed for you, Paul. I uh, hope you're enjoying the car. And, uh, you know, we'll talk about what's happened there and how that will probably change over time as well. So nothing to do particularly with the Peugeot, just talking about EVs in general uh, and the strategy for us as a country about going electric. So um, that'll be two videos time. But the first one is going to be the long journey this weekend. Um, let's see how it goes. Um, I hope we don't get stranded in the middle of the Yorkshire Dales with no charge in the car. Uh, only time will tell. All right. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.